Here is the next hands-on for the SBSFU, which is uh, adding protections. So what we will do during this hands-on? Uh, we will experience a code injunction attack. Uh, we'll show you uh, uh, and you, you will experience it. And uh, then we will activate a countermeasure in SBSFU to uh, provide, to in a way uh, show you uh, uh, why isolation is useful inside uh, the inside the MCU. So the scenario we will experiment a real code injection attack and then we will activate the firewall uh, as a countermeasure. So what's an inner attack? Uh, the principle of inner attack is to exploit a software weakness. Uh, to be able to uh, inject a malicious code. Uh, here we take the example of uh, buffer overflow. So we send uh, more data than expected in uh, uh, through the, the UART, for instance, here. Uh, and the weakness is that the software does not check uh, the limit. Uh, of uh, data that uh, we will send. So uh, there will, it will result in data um, written in an expected location and it will change the system behavior. So we provide you a simple example with a receive command termi terminated by a backslash n uh, via UART. Uh, the software only checks uh, the, the backslash n to, to check the end of the command and does not check the number of uh, characters received. And uh, so what's the possible weakness here is just to uh, send a command longer than expected. So let's build this uh, weak code that uh, we provided you. Uh, the code is uh, located always in the same location, so now it is a simple app with weakness, which is already uh, compatible with the SBSFU, so it, it was uh, uh, placed in the good uh, location and uh, the vector table also was placed in the loca good location. So open your cube ID. So here we are in the same state as we were um, on the previous hands-on. Just close the, the previous project and open the simple app with weakness that, with, that is just at the same level here. Select folder finish. You can build now this simple app with weakness and you will be able to check here when it's built the size of the uh, file to check if everything is okay. 15, 4, 5, 2. So let's build it. This was built uh, using uh, CubeMX, so it's uh, uh, really the, the, always the same structure. And uh, you can see the code. There is still um, a warning that uh, reveals that the code is not well uh, coded. And uh, so you have here the, the, the receiving command. So here we have the good size. So here we are okay for this step. Let's go further. Next step is to um, to configure the SBSFU um, because uh, by default SBSFU is delivered with all protections activated. 
So uh, we need here to remove the isolation protections to be able to uh, show you uh, the, uh, what happens when you don't have them. Uh, so to do this, uh, SBSFU provides one configuration file to set up all pro security protections through uh, uh, defined. So this file is appsfu.h. And to find it, you need to go uh, in the includes and in this uh, directory, SBSFU apps. So let's go to kubeid again, reopen, uh, double click to open SBSFU if you closed it uh, previously. Okay, here click on includes. And normally here you have, you can display and you have SBSFU app. So this is this one and uh, you open the first app sfu.h. So in this file, I make it bigger, you go down and at some point you will see here the protections that are each protection activated. So take all the block until uh, the, the last command here and click on source toggle command. So we command here everything and then we will uh, remove the commands for uh, protection that do not concern the uh, isolation. So write protect, RDP, PC wrap uh, is a protection, uh, firewall is a protection, is a isolation protection, Tamper detect is not. Oops. Uh, DAP is not. DMA you can activate and uh, watchdog you can still activate. The MPU is obviously uh, isolation protection. So now don't forget to save Control S to make sure that uh, it is uh, saved here and you can rebuild. It will rebuild. Uh, so let's go back to the slides. So here we selected app SFU. We selected all the block and toggle the command. And so you need to check where you are and reactivated the non uh, the protection that are not related to isolation. Control S and rebuild. So at the end, you should see three warnings that corresponds to the three um, uh, protections that were deactivated. So let's go back to our cube ID. Uh, something happened that uh comes from here so let's do it again so in this file you have uh, also some you can activate uh, verbose mode uh, you can uh, say that you want to use a local loader or not inside the SBSFU. Uh, you have, um, and uh, you also can deactivate the SFU debug mode here. Mm, what also you can do here, you can activate uh, which level you want to activate. So if you want to activate RDP level two, which uh, you can com cannot come back from, uh, you need to activate this secure final secure lock enable. So this is this is more for production, and that's it. So here we have our three warnings, and uh, you can see the warnings which protection was disabled. Okay, let's come back to the PowerPoint. Then. 
we need to uh, now the SBSFU has been uh, rebuilt. We can launch the um, the post build to concatenate the simple app and the SBSFU to be able to uh, launch it on the target. So we open again the scripts and post build simple app with weakness. So here this is exactly the same as before except that at the end we have so we have our five steps we we patch the generated binary uh, in uh, besides the the keys uh, because keys are usually uh, binary and it's difficult to to it's difficult to to show in a, in text mode, so we add this uh, string inside the, the binary uh, close to the key area because this is what we want to extract. Next step reset the target and flash. So let's reset. Reset the target and flash our simple app with weakness. I open the Terra term that uh, was displaying the last hands on, and here we flashed it. And so here I can close this uh, window. We still have RDP level one activated, so we need to do a power on reset. So I disconnect and reconnect my board. And uh, press uh, reset. And you can see now that we have a hello world and enter command. So you can uh, type keys, there is no echo, and type return and just message received. It's a really basic. Uh, uh, software just for demonstration. Come back to the slides. Here, what we you should see. So now we have our application that is working. Uh, it was uh, validated by the SBSFU, uh, and it is. Uh, but here we remove these uh, uh, isolation protections. So we are in the field and the hacker is in at attacking the device and injecting the code uh, to read the content of the UART. So what uh, we will try to extract here is the key area that is uh, no more isolated in this example. So to do this, uh, we have prepared this uh, hack.bin uh, that uh, will uh, eject more data than uh, expected and uh, will provoke the um, the will enable the uh, injection of uh, code that will be able to read where it wants. So let's inject it. So you need to use uh, here the send file instead of transfer that we used before. Just send a binary file, select the act.bin in binary and open. So let's do it file, send file. So here we are in, oops, let's go to L4, simple app with weakness. And if you go down, you have this binary. So here we, we pretend to uh, send some uh, characters to the UART but we send a, a, a bit more than expected and see what happens. Here it is. So the code was injected and as you could see, first 
we can see uh, well, some characters that we cannot uh, we, we could we could extract them in the binary but here for it's easier to to see and this is why we added this secure case storage string inside the code to show you that now because there was no uh, isolation we can uh, extract what we want from the uh, from the flash and uh, what happens here is that it's resetting because uh, the watchdog is no more uh, updated and so a reset is done and, uh, and detected so you can see that it is uh, really possible to inject uh, something in the uh, and to to get uh, well the, the the act that been uh, the, the the building of this uh, uh, this file uh, would take a lot of time to the hacker, but one, once it's done, it can it's uh, completely reproducible. So here we read the secrets. Okay. So, in conclusion, we perform the hack using a simple UART interface. Uh, interface with outside world means surface of attack. It's always uh, the, the, the inner attack as are always using the interface to outside world, either local interface or um, Ethernet interface. Each Open door is a way for hacker to temper your assets. So this demonstrates why isolation is very important. So how SBSFU addresses isolation? So we the, the SBSFU uh, use all isolation mechanism available in each STM32. Uh, it, for the STM32L4, it uses the firewall, the MPU, and the PC ROP. Uh, the firewall is only available on the L4 and L0 series, but the MPU is available everywhere and PC ROP on most of the uh, STM32. So the uh, firewall is a hardware mechanism that, mechanism that protects the flash and RAM at uh, specific areas that are set up uh, at, at boot time and uh, cannot be changed anymore. And if you try to access to, to read or execute in this area from the outside, it resets immediately. The MPU memory protection unit is a cortex M mechanism that gives attribute to uh, to some uh, address ranges so you can uh, say that this address range is only executable this one is a uh, read only and so on it's also used for cache activation for instance and the pc rop is a, um, a specific part of flash that we define through the option bytes that uh, makes this part of flash execute only so you cannot read, you cannot write it. So it's a way to isolate a part of the flash this way. You can just jump to a <coughs> function and execute the function. This PC ROP is used in SBSFU to store the keys in an executable way. So you need to, to execute a function to get the key in RAM. So here we will see what happens when activating the firewall. Uh, so before activating, we will uh, just a reminder, reminder that uh, what was already uh, presented in the, in the theoretical part of uh, all the protection that are activated. So here you can see the keys are uh, really protected behind the firewall, the right protection, also the PC ROP and in MPU or X. So you can see that uh, there are several several levels of protection. The more you add protections, the, 
the the more difficult uh, the hacker will uh, have access to this uh, data. So here we just will just activate the firewall in our application. So uncomment uh, the firewall. So let's uncomment it here. Control S and build. Okay. Here you should have only two warnings. Let's see. So it's not really building everything, only what is depending on this uh, configuration file. You can see here we don't have any more the firewall disabled. And the size should be 58698. Okay, that's fine. Two warnings. Everything is okay. So now we need to do exactly the same sequence reset the target, pause build, and flash. Let's do it now. So use the scripts, um, reset target, pause build with uh, weakness, so with the patch at the end, and flash. No. I open the Terra term. Okay. I reset, not reset, uh, uh, power on reset the board. Type reset button and so next step, we flash again, we send again, sorry, the, the hack so file, send in binary, hack.bin, open, and you can see what happens here. The content of the flash didn't leak. Instead of uh, leaking, a reset was generated and it is identified by the SBSFU firewall reset. So that's all for this uh, hands-on. So what did we learn? First, that uh, using a stack overflow, uh, we, can, uh, we can inject code and uh, this code can do whatever it wants. Uh, so it, uh, it is important to be able to isolate the critical part, the secrets, the crypto operations, and, and so on, from the pure functional parts that are related to communication and that uh, contain some, uh, could contain some open doors and that are surf surface of attack. Uh, we could see that uh, SBSFU also implement all possible mechanisms to perform this isolation. And it combines all these mechanisms in the best way to, to make uh, your uh, application uh, safe. And uh, also the secrets safe. Thank you. That's, uh, that's all for this uh, hands-on. Here is the appendix for this hands-on, how attack is actually performed. So here is the code we use uh, in the weak application. So we have a buffer URT read uh, that is using a local buffer. We receive one character, we check if it is a backslash n, and then if it's okay, we transmit the message. Here, there is no code to manage what 
was received, but that's not the point. And if not, we store the content, uh, we store this character in the buffer and we increase the buffer without checking the, the limit. So this is where is the weakness. And then we reload the watchdog. So in the assembly code, what you can see is that when you enter in this function, you push two registers, the R7, which is a working register, and the link register. And why you, you push the link register? Uh, the, the reason is that you call another function inside this function. In, in that case, you need to uh, keep uh, the calling, the, the, the address of the function that uh, called this read your buffer. And also here we can see the allocation of uh, 48 characters corresponding to the local buffer. And uh, at the end, you can see that um, the, we add uh, 48 to the R7, which, uh, which contains a stack pointer here. So this to remove uh, from the stack stack pointer the buffer and then uh, so we push this on the stack pointer and then we pop the r7 and the program counter so we put in the program counter the address uh, of the caller to be able to come back so that's the principle used by uh, all compilers now how the stack is uh, looks like in that case here here is the stack from the caller so uh, stack uh, also goes from high address to low addresses and so we first push on the stack link register on r7 and then we allocate 48 bytes uh, of buffer on the stack and so you will see that here when we write to this buffer, if we go over, then we write on the R7 and then on the link register. And this is where the attack takes place because here you will be able to change the return address. Let's continue. So we inject the malicious code here and the last word, which is the return address, the attacker will replace it with the beginning of the assembly code so that's that means that here we can inject some code and just at the end jump on this code this is as simple as that so here is a, an example of assembly code um, well, it's a very simple just uh, uh, put in some registers the address of uh, the UART, another re register the address of the flash containing the keys. Uh, so you have 08003F0. Uh, the number of bytes to read. So here it was uh, for this uh, demo to avoid reading too many characters. But, uh, you can put what you want. And then you send first byte to the UART, you read one byte from flash, you send it to the UART, you wait uh, for completion of this uh, UART sending, uh, subtract one to the, the counter to, to reach, uh, check if it reaches zero, and then uh, send the next byte. This will loop until 256 and then stop. So, then this code is assembled to obtain a binary data to be injected. And then the most complex thing is to find the uh, additional content in the overflow part. Uh, the additional part, which is the address to jump to. And uh, the address to jump to depends uh, where your stack is located. And uh, it will, uh, the hacker will uh, probably make, make a lot of uh, trial and errors and try to find, uh, to, to guess where this address is. So this is the tricky part of uh, injection. All this content was uh, built uh, in some way manually. 
uh, you can find uh, the, um, the project used to build this hack in the finished project uh, hack. And here you have uh, in the, in the main.c, uh, you have the, the assembly file that was uh, used and, uh, to test if it was working on the simple uh, project. So you can uh, reproduce it and change, uh, change uh, and make uh, your own trial. So that's it for this uh, appendix. Thank you for your attention.